started in just about a minute here. As always, everything that I lead you through is just an invitation. See if you can move through the postures in the way that I lead them. And if that doesn't feel good on your body, don't feel any pressure for things to have to look any which way. It's more about how they feel in your body. Um, you want to leave the mat feeling better than you walked on. We'll start with a grounding meditation, followed by a 45, 50 minute, like 50, 55 minute movement practice. And then we'll end with a nice long Shavasana, um, final relaxation pose. So it's about 75 minutes in total. You're welcome to join at any point that works for you. Just take the sky off. Good morning, good morning. I'm just gonna pause the music for our centering. So we'll just find Lucy's here with us too. Say hi, Luce. Thank you. <laughs> hello, hello. Okay. So we're going to find a comfortable seated position with the heart over the hips. Let's see. Make sure all this is off. Can't see everyone to say hi, and I miss Wednesdays with you. Oh, I miss you too, Mimi. It's so good to see you, or, or to hear from you. Um, thanks for stopping in and saying good morning, happy new moon, and I hope you have a great Wednesday. I might start going more live on um, on Instagram too. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But uh, all right. So we're just finding a nice, comfortable seated position here. You might be in a chair right now, or you might be um, on the ground with me. Either way, it works just fine. Legs crossed, hands come to rest on the knees. If your lower back bothers you here, then just stick a block or a pillow underneath your hips so you can get your hips higher than your knees, and that should alleviate some lower back pain. Hands are resting gently on the knees either palms down to ground down or palms up to give and receive energy if you feel you've got something more to give. Eyes can close if that's comfortable for you or just a soft gaze down past your feet works as well too without specifically staring at anything or looking at anything. And we'll just start this breath, uh, this practice with three cleansing breaths. In through the nose, the shoulders rise up towards the ears and out through the mouth. Just drop the shoulders away. Audible sigh. And just let the breath continue back to normal, in and out through the nose if that's available to you. And we'll just take a moment here to arrive. I'll let go of everything that came before and everything that's to come up after. And just become present to yourself here in this moment, here in this space. Allowing sounds into your awareness. Perhaps passing traffic outside the window. The sound of your dog. Licking his leg, 
whatever it might be, just allowing it in all part of this moment, this experience. Notice the temperature of the air on your skin and the weight where your body makes contact with the ground below you. The weight of your hands on your knees. And begin to scan your body from head down towards toes. Like passing through an x-ray machine, checking in for any places of tightness or sensitivity. Any restlessness or fidgeting. Just allowing the things that call out for your attention to inform your practice. So if things are showing up as painful and see those messages as a blessing in this moment that you might be more informed in the way you move throughout the rest of your day. And we'll shift the awareness from that Anamaya Kosha up to Pranamaya Kosha, your energetic body. I'm just noticing from a scale of one to 10 where you're at in this moment. One being exhausted, fatigued, ready for bed. 10 being so full of energy, it's hard to sit still. and shifting the awareness to the breath. No need to change it, just observe. Inhalations, exhalations, and whatever space, whatever holding in between. Shifting the awareness up to Mano Maya Kosha, mind, allowing thoughts and feelings to arise. Just allowing yourself to watch them from a distance without engaging or feeding into the storylines, like clouds passing in the sky. Notice what are the quality of the thoughts today? Do they have a positive or a negative tilt to them? Are they ruminating on the past or attempting to predict the future? Not right or wrong, not good or bad, just something to notice. And we'll bring the attention back down to the breath. This time actively expanding the breath. Every inhale sips in a little more air. And every exhale lets something more go. Inhale fills belly like a balloon inflating, expanding out to the sides. And exhale, draws belly button in towards spine. Inhale, fills belly and ribs expand. Exhale, releases ribs, then belly, deflating. Inhale, fills belly, 
ribs and chest air filling all the way up to the collarbones and exhale releases chest ribs belly inhaling from bottom to top exhaling top to bottom And continuing like this at your own pace, attempting to slow down and deepen your breath. So today's lesson is our fourth part of our mindfulness, our intro to mindfulness series. And today's principle of focus is patience. Life can move really fast. We can get caught up in all the things that we want to be doing without really being present in what we are doing. Patience is allowing experiences to unfold on their schedule not on ours. It's a willingness to spend time on things that are really hard. It's allowing ourselves to take as much time as we need with all our feelings, as inconvenient as they might feel. In your next exhale, let go of any holding, any effort from the breath and just return to a normal pace. Hands come to meet at heart center, palms pressed together in Anjali Mudra. No space between the fingers, thumbs pressed into the sternum, slight tucking of the chin. And consider here setting an intention or a dedication for your practice. You can use the intention that you've been working on, or you might adopt patience as your intention for today's practice. And we'll seal that intention with the sound of Om. First, a cleansing breath. your hands to drop down to your lap, chin drops towards chest. And then inhale, right ear rolls over towards right shoulder. Exhaling, chin to chest. And left ear rolls over towards left shoulder. Just allowing the head to roll side to side. Opening the space between ear, neck, and shoulders. You can keep your eyes closed for this. This is really no wrong answers. And extend the right head rolls through center. Just bring it up to neutral. Roll the shoulders forward. Hello, good morning. Good morning, friends. Good morning, Shiva. Welcome in, welcome in. Roll the shoulders back. Hello from Switzerland. Hello, hello. Nice. And coming to stillness in the shoulders, we'll inhale the arms sweep up overhead. 
exhale, bending over to the right, left arm reaches over. And drawing a big circle in front, left hand leads, right hand follows. Big circle over to the sides. Really no wrong answers here. Exhaling through center as they're folded over the belly. It's natural to exhale. And inhaling as we stretch up tall. Exhaling, swooping forward. Inhaling to rise and sway to the side. Once more in this direction, just a little free movement to wake up the spine. We'll bring it to the other side. So I just like starting class with these, or starting practice with these free movements because sometimes if we start with twists or folds or things that someone might be familiar with, we're trying to force ourselves into the deepest fold or twist too early in class. So instead we just roll through these flowy mo movements. And there's less of a chance of like straining anything because we're just moving to move without any goal of it being the flowiest of the flows or anything like that. Morning my love. All right, back through center. I'm gonna release the arms down by your sides. Extend the legs out in front. Spread and scrunch the toes. Roll out the ankles. Change directions. We'll bend in the knees, feet come flat onto the ground and drop the knees side to side. So the feet are far enough apart that they don't stack on top of one another. I'm just letting the legs wake up. The hips move a bit. And today we're gonna to be moving through Chandra Namaskar. So our moon salutations instead of sun salutations, which we've kind of been working on all year. Um, since there's a new moon tonight, or like right now as it's happening, right? So, it's out of the way. There's a tilt screen so you guys can see me. Let your knees fall over to the, there we go. Right, here we go. To the right, we're gonna come into a tabletop facing the front of the mat. Toes tuck under, and then let's sit back on the heels. We're giving the bottoms of the feet a stretch, arms sweep up overhead. And exhale, elbows bend, hands come to shoulder height. We're just gonna wave out the hands, just warming up the wrists. I'm gonna play piano. I'm gonna stop that from happening. It's okay. Piano, rather play piano. Stretching out the tops of the hands. Flip the hands so the hands are pressing as far back as they can. Fingers spread wide, it's like you're tossing pizzas. So if your feet are starting to hurt, like, just like be mindful. Like if your knees hurt, you want to avoid that. If your feet are hurting a bit, you might just need a good stretch. If you're not feeling a stretch at all, just lean back more. It's going to bring more weight into your toes. And then like shaking off water. Just shake out the hands a bit here for three. Two, one, all right. Onto hands and knees, tabletop pose, shoulders are over the wrists, knees are over the hips. On the inhale, belly drops, hips and chest rise. Exhale, rounding in the spine, chin tucks towards chest. Following the breath in for cow pose. If you want more of a stretch, pull your hands in towards your knees, knees in towards hands, gripping at the mat for some resistance, some grip. And exhale, rounding the spine through cat. It's the opposite movement. I'm pressing my hands forward, pressing my knees back for the grip leverage to round deeper. 
Following your own breath's pace here, let the speed of your body be informed by the length of your breath. And the next time you exhale through cat pose, let it be your last and return to center. And the left arm sweeps open on the inhale, reaching towards the sky. Exhale, weave the arm through, reaching through that negative space for thread the needle. We'll inhale it straight back up. Exhale, reaching without landing. And once more, inhale, sweep up. Exhale, reach and land. The left ear down to the ground and arm. This arm's pressing into the ground harder and softer, trying to get that stretch on the left shoulder blade. This right hand is pressed in front of the face, pressing the ground away to keep my chest open towards the long side of the mat wall. Hips stay squared, hips stay over the knees. Don't let them sink back towards the heels. Right hand might reach forward. This feels like a nicer stretch for me because I'm pressing into the ground and this leverage works from the way my shoulders are built. But it might feel better for you to keep the hand in front of the face or even bring the hand to the lower back. If you're going for the bind, grabbing the inside of the left thigh, just notice if to do that you had to tuck in your right shoulder and collapse a bit in the chest, that's not worth it. The whole idea is to get the chest even more open for the bind. So like, I can get there. This still feels like a nicer stretch, so I'm going to stay with this variation. Maybe you extend the right leg long. I'm still keeping my toes on the floor to begin, just to make sure I'm stable. And maybe begin to levitate this right foot up. That's super slow motion. Momentum is not your friend here. And if you roll over onto your back, like it's okay. You're already on the ground, so it's not like you're falling to the ground. And then the trick is you're just breathing here. You don't hold your breath. When the breath stops, the pose stops. Letting that foot float back down. Knees come down next to one another. Right hand lands in front of the face. Left arm, like pressing rewind, sweeps up towards the sky. And hand touches down to the ground. I'm going to turn around so I'm still facing you guys. And now the other arm, the right hand, make this work. the right hand sweeps up and open. Exhale, weave the arm through. Inhale to open. Exhale to twist without landing. Once more like this. Inhale, reaching towards the sky. Exhale, weaving the arm through, landing side of the head and arm onto the ground. Left hand is pressing in front of the face this time, keeping the chest open. I'm, I'm trying to triangulate the space on my right shoulder blade or trapezius, like the right side of my neck, that feels the stretch. And it would, the place that's going to feel most beneficial, like that feels the most good, right? So not necessarily the most painful. And that means I can change the positioning of this left arm, maybe overhead, pressing into the ground. Maybe I have to find or the hand at the lower back. Just notice the shoulder tends to go forward here, which kind of defeats the purpose. Finding that variation in the arm that works for you. One side might be different than the other, that's all right. We don't treat our bodies symmetrically the rest of our days, so why would they feel the same in symmetrical yoga poses? You might want to play around with balance like we did on the other side, extending 
the left leg straight and keep my toes on the ground to begin. And then slowly begin to float the left leg up. I'm going more so for length than for height. So first and foremost, I'm reaching towards the wall behind me. And then as I engage the muscles in the glutes and the back of the leg, the leg can start to rise more towards the ceiling, but it's length first and then height. Still, I'm breathing into the right side of my neck and shoulder as the whole point is to get a nice deep stretch in that area of the body. Breathing fully here. And gently release the foot back down to the ground. Drop the knee to the ground. Left hand lands in front of the face and right arm sweeps open, arm towards the sky. And the hand touches down to the ground. Okay. We'll take a step forward with the right foot, forward with the left foot, bringing the feet nice and wide. Almost mats distance apart. If you don't have a mat, like more than a shoulder distance apart. Knees nice and bent. You can bend and extend one leg and then the other. So begin to wake up the backs of the legs. Coming to stillness and center with the legs, the knees are still bent. I release the top part of my body, giving the head a nod yes. And a shake no. And grab opposite elbows with the hands, creating a little frame for the head. For ragdoll, just giving yourself a rock side to side, waving, bobbing, whatever really works for you as we just release the spine here. Knees are as bent as necessary, as bent as feels good. There's just a little free movement here in this first major forward fold to kind of get the body accustomed or awoken to this position. And bend the knees nice and deep, arms release down. We're gonna roll all the way up to stand. Turn to face one another. I'm gonna just take a moment here to grab a sip of water. As we come into our standing portion of class. on the mat, facing one another. Big toes come to touch, heels uh, have a little space between them so that the ankles don't knock together. We inhale, arms sweep up overhead, fingers interlace, and index finger is released. So it's like you're holding your own hand and then pointing up towards the sky. Mm -hmm. It's called steeple pose with the hand position. Arms are straight, biceps are back behind the ears. And then just notice to make that happen, the lower back tends to sway out like Daffy Duck butt, but instead we wanna engage the lower abs to keep lengthen the back. So instead of that natural S curve, we actually wanna force it more into a straight line. So, engaging the hips, inhaling nice and tall. Exhale, we bend over to the right hips, press out to the left to counterbalance, making a crescent moon shape in the body. So strong in the legs without bending any knees. It's really tempting to bend the right knee here. We're gonna keep it straight. Bottom right shoulder is probably gonna wanna lean back. Instead, we press it forward. Breathing fully here into the whole left side body, strong in the arms, strong in the breath. 
bring it back up through center. Neutralize, let the shoulders melt away. Re-engage in the lower abs to keep the alignment. Deep breath in. And exhale over to the left. Hips press out to the right to counterbalance. So be strong in the legs, strong in the arms. Biceps pull back behind the ears. Bottom left shoulders pressing forward, pressing through. We're breathing fully here to the whole right side body. Inhale brings you back up through center. Arms release down parallel to the ground. We take a step out to the right and a step out to the left. Just come out nice and wide in the legs. Then heels come in, toes come out, palms turn to face the front, like thumbs up towards the sky. Star pose. So this is more of a transition pose, but there's still some activation through it. So I'm actually pressing through my heels to the ground, reaching through the fingertips as if they're going to touch the front and back wall and crown of the head's reaching towards the sky. So like literally radiating out in five directions, deep breath in. And exhale, goddess pose, bending in the elbows, bending in the knees. I'm going towards 90 degrees in the elbows, 90 degrees in the knees. I'm squeezing my shoulder blades together like there's a pencil in between my scapula, in between those shoulder blades. Glutes are squeezed tight, bringing the knees up over the ankles. And breathing here. Back through star pose just for a moment. The right toes turn to face the front of the mat, short end of the mat. Back toes turn to face the long end of the mat. Hands come onto the hips. And then we drop the right hip down. Left hip pops up like teapot. Spout reaches as far as it can forward. And then that arm releases down. Left arm releases up for a triangle pose, trikonasana. So even if you know your hand can reach the ground, avoid that, instead keep it at the calf so that we're getting more engagement, more strength building in the obliques and the side body. It's like you have a friend pulling you up through this left hand. Strong in the legs, strong in the arm, uh, strong in the breath. Head can look up towards top hand or down towards bottom hand to give the neck a stretch. Imagine it's like you're between two panes of glass. And try to be as flat as possible. One more deep breath here. Exhale, bend in the right knee. Hands come down to frame the foot. Runner's lunge. Then walking your hands, knee, and foot towards the long edge of the mat. You might come on to toes just how we were before. So I'm on, I'm uh, resting my hips on my heel. My heel is lifted up off the ground. I got my knee and my toes facing the same direction, the long end of the mat. And this side foot maybe rolls onto the heel. So just be mindful, listen to your knees over my voice. This is a lot on your foot or on your thigh, then just see if you can keep working through it. But if it's your knee that's sharp and painful, then drop the heel down and uh, both feet are on the ground and you're just in a deep side lunge. Or here in Skandasana, you can begin to play with balance. You might already feel like a balance pose. Walk the hand, fingertips back, back, back. And there's our lovely landscapers in the background. So we're just being patient with ourselves, our environment, being grateful that there's the internet and a space to practice at all. Maybe a hand comes to rest on the thigh. Maybe a second hand comes to rest on the thigh. Setting and resetting. Beginning and beginning again. And here we'll Place the hands back down on the ground. Bring that left foot in to come to a seated uh, center squat. 
So now I'm attempting to get both heels onto the ground. My toes are more or less facing forward. They're a little bit angled out, but they're not all the way angled out. Right? They're more trying to face in front. I let my I let my hips be heavy. If my heels don't reach the ground. You can place a rolled up towel below them. Elbows are pressed into the inside of the knees. Palms come together and then pressing through to that prayer pose, bringing thumb to heart center, press the knees open, bringing the chest up nice and high. So I'm trying to get my chest up over my hips, head up over my chest, malasana deep squat. Deep breath in here. And exhale, look over the right shoulder. Inhale through center. Exhale over left, sh uh, right shoulder, other shoulder. Sorry. <laughs> back through center. Then hands release to frame the back foot, so the left foot. And send the right foot back for a runner's lunge. So I'm facing the other side of the mat. Drop the right heel down so the toes are facing long side of the mat. And then both hands come to the inside of the left foot. Right arm sweeps open towards the sky, extended side angle. Then pressing into the pinky side edge of this back right foot and the heel of this front left foot, extend the left leg straight. Triangle pose, but coming into it from the other direction. The bottom hand's pressed into the calf, top hand's reaching towards the sky. The head can turn down or up to give that uh, even stretch to the neck. Bend into the left knee, warrior two. Press it up through star pose. Heels come in, toes come out. Bend in knees, bend in elbows. Goddess pose. Full breath here, squeezing the glutes, squeezing the shoulder blades. Back through star, toes face forward. Step the feet back in towards center. Arms come up overhead. Then arms release down by the sides. All right, deep breath in, let it go. <sighs> All right, so that was one moon salutation cycle. Let's even it out with the other side. Arms sweep up overhead on the inhale, fingers interlace. Now check it out. We're gonna change the direction of which finger is on top. So right now, this right finger is on top. I'm changing the interlace of the hands. So my non-dominant hand is on top. Stop. It's gonna feel a little awkward. Index finger releases, arms are up overhead, triceps, rather biceps by the ears, arms as straight as they can be, shoulders melted away. We elongate the lower back, engaging in the abs, deep breath in, big toes touching. Exhale, bend over to the left, hips press out to the right to counterbalance. Left shoulders pressing forward, actively opening the whole right side body, right? So these moon salutations are longer <laughs> and different than our sun salutations. So if you think about the 24 hour cycle of the sun versus the 28 day cycle of the moon. It's all in correspondence. It makes just the right amount of sense. We'll inhale back up through center. And exhale over to the right. Breathing fully here. That bottom right shoulder is pressing forward, chest stays open. Arms stay straight and locked, the knees stay straight. We'll inhale back up through your center. And then release the arms parallel to the ground, take a step out to the right and the left. 
legs come nice and wide. Then heels come in, toes go out, thumbs towards the sky, reaching through the fingertips, pressing through the heels, crown of the head reaching towards the sky. Star pose, deep breath in. Exhale, goddess, bend in the knees, bend in the elbows. Squeezing shoulder blades together, squeezing the glutes, legs are strong, full breath here. Extend through star pose, then the right toes turn in to face long side of the mat, left toes turn out to face short side of the mat. Hands come down to the hips, drop the left hip down, right hip rises like a little teapot. Spout reaches forward, 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 stretching even further than before. That hand releases down, back of the hand into the needy part of the calf. Right arm towards the sky. Chest is open, so this whole side, um, this whole pose is almost like you're trying to get as flat as possible. You're trying to fit between two panes of glass. So there's no folding, it's just a side, deep, deep side bend. Some engagement of the side body, the obliques are working. Legs are working. Trikonasana, triangle pose. Last deep breath in. And exhale, bend in the left knee, sending the right foot back for a runner's lunge. Hands come to land, tented fingers, framing that front left foot. Then walk the hands towards the long side of the mat, and the foot, the toe, and knee goes with it. Maybe coming up onto that toe stand positioning. So I'm lifted up off the heel on purpose. Knees pressing forward without touching the ground. Right foot can turn onto the heel. And then walk the fingers back. Maybe starting to play with that balance. Flexing through the right foot, bring some more engagement, some more stability into the posture. Just remembering your intention and remembering the lesson of today, patience. This is patience with ourselves as well. Patience starts from within, as with all, as we're learning with all characteristics of ways we would like to be with each other. It all starts with our relationship with ourselves. So you need to begin again or alter the posture in any way. It's okay. Hands release down, bring that right foot in, drop the hips down towards center, drop the heels onto the ground, working towards the toes, facing the long side of the mat, they'll naturally splay out, but we're just starting with them facing forward. I bring my arms to the insides of my knees, palms together, and then as I press the hands down to heart center, I use the elbows to open the knees out to the side. So that might mean a little bit of um, changing the distance between the heels. It might mean the toes have to splay out a little bit more, maybe more like 45 degrees. That's just fine. We're just noticing. There is no perfecting poses and postures. It's all about process, not about product. Breathing fully here, chest is over the hips. I just like giving a little like wiggle, almost like a frog on a lily pad. That feels good for my hips, for my knees. But if that feels painful to you, stillness works too. Just keep the breathing full. We've just got one more breath here. We'll frame the back right foot. Send the left foot back behind you for a runner's lunge, facing the front of the mat. Hands come to the inside of that front right foot. Drop the left heel down to the ground so the toes are facing the long side of the mat. And left arm sweeps open towards the sky. Extended side angle. 
pressing into the heel of the right foot, the pinky side edge of the left foot. We'll extend power, press through the front leg to straighten it out. Bottom hands pressing into the meaty part of the calf. Left arms reaching towards the sky. Shoulders are far away from the ears. Trikonasana triangle pose. And you can turn the head to look at the hand. It gives the neck a nice stretch. If looking up brings any pinching or pain to the neck, it's not necessary, uh, mandatory to do that. Um, you can look down. Or you can try this trick. Bring the chin down towards the chest and then look up. Now your chin is close to your shoulder instead of your ear, and there's a pretty good chance it help alleviate some of that pinching. It's just about experimenting and having the patience to go through multiple experiments. And bend in the right knee, warrior two. Extend the right leg straight, through star, heels come in, toes come out, deep breath in. Exhale, bend in the knees, bend in the elbows. Nice. Goddess pose for a full breath here. And back through star, toes turn to face the long side of the mat. And set the hands in, uh, set the feet in together, arms move up overhead. And exhale, arms release down by the sides. You can give it a little shake out here. And we're just beginning to let all that effort in go. You might already feel kind of hot, like from the moon salutations. It's pretty warming, especially if you're not used to doing those side lunges. Haven't really brought those into class yet this year. So it's kind of like an intro to Skandasana, which is probably one of the more intense poses that we've done, um, but more to come. So great job following along and doing it in your own body, making it through that Chandra Namaskar, moon salutations, the hands a shake. Shoulders shake. Give it a bounce. You can just be dropping the heels down to bounce or giving a nice big jump. Just let the whole body kind of flop. I'm gonna work into our breaths of joy. Four part breath, 33% of the air. On the inhale, as the arms sweep forward, 33% of an inhale as the arms sweep out, no exhale in between. 33% of an inhale, arms sweep forward, and the exhale is an audible ha, the arms sweeping back, a chair pose. We have 10 of those. So, inhale, 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 Ha! In. 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 Ha! In. 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 Ha! In. 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 Ha! Ha! Three more. Ha! Ha! Last one. Ha! So I the eyes to close, let the legs be nice and wide for stability. Hand comes to the heart, hand comes to the belly. <sighs> Just taking a moment here to <laughs> observe what was created, whatever heat, 
whatever breath. Whatever thoughts. Notice how through breath you were able to change that relationship to the environment. The relationship of the temperature of your skin to the air. Maybe your heartbeat sounds louder than the passing traffic outside. Gently blink the eyes back open, perhaps taking a sip of water, just gonna turn this, you guys are good, I'm just moving so I can be closer to you, closer to you, great, we're gonna find our way to the back of the mat, if you're not already down, if you're already down, stay there, if not, arm sweep up on the inhale, Exhale, soften the knees, forward fold. Inhale to a halfway lift. Exhale, bend in the knees deep, deep, so deep. The hips lower down, hands come down to the sides, and come down to seated. Beautiful. I'm gonna do some more chest opening, heart opening. Moon day. If you have a block, just place it near. You probably bring bring them over. If not, don't worry. They're not mandatory. We're coming to kneeling, just like we did before with our. How does camera work? Yeah, that'll work. With our toes tucked underneath, so we're really opening up the bottoms of the feet today. So good work, thank you feet. I love you, I love you. I think we're all on our feet a lot less than maybe we were a year or two ago. But um, but even still, like we don't want them atrophying. So if you have a block, you can place it on either side of your ankles, like on either side of your feet. I'm gonna press it up to kneeling. So now I'm not really like pressing back on the heels. My knees are natural distance apart, hips distance apart. There's not a certain number of inches. It's gonna be different for everybody's body. I'm gonna bring my right hand down onto that block or onto this heel. Sending the hips forward, trying to get the hip over the knee. I'm gonna bring a nice big circle with this left arm. come along for the ride. I'm just checking out the whole mobility range of motion in this arm. And the next time the arm sweeps forward, allow it to bring you up through center. And then the left hand reaches down for that block or the heel right arm begins to check out these circles or explore these circles. And one side might feel different than the other. I got this like gnarly clicking in my right shoulder that just does not exist in my left. It's not bad or worse or any of that jazz. It's just like Oh, okay, that's there. That's something to notice. Like, that's good information for me to have. Or that's information for me to have, right? And this next big circle sweep, bring the arm and the chest back up. Great. So, if you felt like you had a lot of space, you might untuck your toes or keep them tucked under. If you're using blocks, you can untuck them. We're gonna um, go into our full camel pose. So it's a half camel. So just like in our side crescent stretch, 
we're gonna elongate the lower back. Here you can even be extra, extra, squeezing the glutes, squeezing the abdominals, almost like you're gonna go into a fold, but the top body is not part of that. So almost like you're trying to get into cat pose with the bottom body, and we're gonna try and get into cow with the top half of the body. See how it goes. So we keep that engagement, we're breathing fully into the ribs and chest more than the belly, right? Belly breathing is not gonna super work here because we're engaged. Lifting tall, hands come almost like you have um, high-waisted jeans on, your hands are in the pockets to remind yourself to keep the hips tucked. And as they press forward, the chest lifts up and we begin to lean back. The hands can stay here for support or they might release onto the heels. Go one at a time, but still, we're trying to avoid like a an L-shaped in the lower back, and instead open up the chest. So it's like there's a string attached to your sternum, pulling you up towards the sky. So I'm lifted, 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 I'm not falling into my shoulders with my neck. Pressing forward with the hips, I'm squeezing my glutes the entire time, building that endurance, that strength. Maybe it feels good to release your head back. Check in with your neck. It's not mandatory. If not, the chin can stay tucked in towards the chest. Ustrasana camel pose. Lifting, lifting, lifting. Breathing into chest and ribs. Deep back bend. Keep the glutes engaged. Keep the breath strong, even in the discomfort of the pose. Even when panic begins to sneak in, as is usual for these back bends. Just breathe through it. No, you're not in danger. Then we release in reverse. Chin tucks towards chest. Hands come onto the lower back for support. Bring it all the way back up to neutral. Release the hips down to the heels, nice and soft. We'll come to seated facing one another. Hands come onto the knees, and we're just gonna give real gentle circles like a spiral. You're just starting from like the middle of the spiral, a little small, and letting it get bigger, but taking your time. Really gentle. Bring some movement back into the lower back and middle back. So when we're in those back bends, it's a very vulnerable position. Think of like a hedgehog, a porcupine, or like every other prey animal. When they see a hawk, they curl in to protect their ooey gooey care bear bellies <laughs> because that's like where all the important stuff is. Um, so now think about a back bend. Um, like lions when they're like puffing their chests out, right? Snakes, all of those things that are like, back bends are very confident, courageous. Even standoffish pose they can be. Think of birds of, birds of paradise and their um, mating dances, you know, all that stuff. So you have to be pretty confident to do a back bend that like a falcon isn't gonna drop from the sky to eat your insides. That's a little dark. All right, let's change directions. Let's just, in the body, in the conversation, my point is that feelings of panic can often come up during these backbending practices, these heart opening practices, right? So on a physical level, it's like a reptilian brain dangerous. And on an emotional level, it's vulnerable, which is emotionally, you know, dangerous as our past experiences say as our you know declined third grade valentine's day you know say <laughs> vulnerability is dangerous it is to be avoided so here we are practicing this vulnerability in the body in the emotions on a rectangular mat you know in yoga class so anyway we're bringing it back to center awesome 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 Turn to the side, maybe your yard turn to the side. Give the knees a hug in towards the chest. 
We're gonna roll it back. You're gonna hit these. Maybe yes. Okay. Giving the knees a hug into the side or hug in towards the center. Giving a roll side to side. I'm gonna drop the heels down to the ground and cross the right ankle over the left knee. So I'm pressing the right knee away, flexing the right foot, and then using just core strength, pull the left knee in towards the body. Reach the hands through, so left hand on the outside of the thigh, right hand through that little triangle bagel hole in between. And then pulling the knee in towards the chest, pressing the right knee away from me using my right elbow. So I'm using my right elbow to press the right knee away. Left leg is relaxed. Left thigh is pulling in, right knee is pressing away. Reclining pigeon or reclining figure four pose. Shoulders are melted away. We're using arm strength, but we're using a bicep curl, not any shoulder effort at all. Release the left foot to the ground, release the right foot to the ground. Cross the left ankle over the right thigh, pressing the left knee away. Using just core strength, the right thigh pulls in towards the body. Hands reach around, left hand through that triangle space, right hand on the outside to grab the back of the right knee, oh sorry, the back of the right leg. Left foot stays flexed, left elbow presses into the left knee opening the hips, using just bicep strength, pulling the right thigh in towards the body. Shoulders stay melted away, and we're just breathing here into the hips. Release the grip, right foot touches down, left foot touches down, knees come in towards the chest, and then both fall over to the right. Right hand comes to land on top of the left knee, left arm opens up like the letter T, pressing the left shoulder towards the ground, or even looking over the left hand for a supine spinal twist, Supta Masyandrasana. bringing the head back up through center, knees back up through center. Release the knees over to the left. Right arm opens up like the letter T. I'm looking over the right shoulder, right shoulders pressing down towards the ground. Rest of the body is relaxed. Head comes back up through center, knees come up through center. And again, the knees last squeeze in. And if there's any last movement or wiggle or pose that your body's asking for, it doesn't have to have a fancy yoga name. Just moving through that movement so that you feel like you have a nice rounded class. Any body parts that called out in the beginning during your body scan that weren't addressed, now is the time. As we prepare for our shavasana, final relaxation pose that might also look like putting on socks or throwing a blanket over your body placing a pillow below your knees to keep
keep a nice bend in them throughout this practice, uh, this meditation, to relieve any stress or pain from the lower back. Whatever preparations necessary to make this practice calming and comfortable. All throughout movement practice, asana practice, we are um, leaning into the discomfort. So now for Shavasana is the time to just integrate, integrate and relax and be comfortable. So I'll be seated up. Beautiful Swiss, nice to see you're still here. Beautiful. Okay, so I'll be seated up so that I can play you some singing bowls. You can stay laying down in your Shavasana, final relaxation pose. and That just looks like laying flat on your back with your legs at least a foot apart from one another. Legs so relaxed that the feet naturally splay open to the sides. And then arms land down by the sides, palms face open to the sky at least six inches from the body. Palms face open a symbol, a mudra of receptivity, allowing yourself to receive the full benefits of your effort here today. Eyes can close if that's comfortable, if not just looking at a soft gaze, with a soft gaze up towards the sky, towards the ceiling. And we'll start with three cleansing breaths, just like in our seated meditation, in through the nose and out through the mouth audible sigh out through the mouth. <sighs> and allow the breathing to continue just through your nose if that's available, returning to a natural pace. Invite space between top and bottom teeth as the jaw hangs heavy and tongue falls away from the roof of the mouth. And all the muscles surrounding the mouth and jaw relax. The muscles surrounding the nose and nostrils relax, allowing your exhalations to become longer and deeper than your inhalations. And the eyes rest heavy in their sockets eyelids just barely touching and the space between the eyebrows broadens as all the muscles in the forehead relax and the muscles surrounding the ears and the back of the head top of the head all release neck and throat relax, shoulders melt away, upper arms and elbows relax, forearms and wrists release. backs of the hands, palms, knuckles, fingers, fingertips, 
whole hand alive with vibration. Whole hands full of creative potential. Rest and integrate all your practice. Upper back, middle and lower back. Rest heavy and supported by the earth below you. Chest naturally rises and falls. Belly naturally rises and falls with the breath. Hips rest heavy, pelvis, glutes rest heavy. Thighs and knees relax. Lower legs and ankles release. heels, arches of the feet, toe ball mounds, tops of the feet, and toes all rest. Whole body resting. Whole body resting. Body resting. life can move really fast. When we get caught up in all the things we want to be doing without really being present in what we are doing. Patience is allowing experiences to unfold on their schedule, not ours. It's willingness to spend time on things that are really hard. It's allowing ourselves to take as much time as we need with all our feelings. Allow for everything that did and did not happen in class today. Know that in yoga, practice always makes practice. Nothing more, nothing less. And slowly invite your inhalations to deepen, become longer and fuller than your exhalations. That feeling of heaviness replaced by a feeling of lightness and openness in the body. begin to wiggle the fingers and the toes, inviting movement into the body. Head begins to rock side to side. 
and the arms reach up overhead for a full body stretch. Knees come in towards the chest and roll over to whichever side feels natural, landing in a fetal position, fully released and fully relaxed onto the ground below you. Eyes stay closed. And consider here any intention or dedication you set for class today. Perhaps it was one of patience. If that intention serves you, take it with you off the mat and into the world. Allow it to affect you and the people around you for the rest of your day. Using as little effort as possible, press your hands into the ground to come up to a seated position facing the front, just like how we started class. Hands come to meet at heart center, palms pressed together in Anjali Mudra. Today our focus uh, thematically was on patience, the fourth principle of mindfulness, the new moon, first new moon of 2021 is here, so we practiced physically through Chandra Namaskar moon salutations. Ending with some heart opening postures, the first namaste is said silently to yourself, thanking your body for the effort it put into class. On the second namaste, I said out loud to one another and everyone who held this space. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you for joining me this morning. I hope you found something that serves you. Namaste. As always, I'm open for your questions about the practice, about the movement, about poses, about life, <laughs> about the new moon at the end of streams. Do you rate, do I have, do I know anybody that is on to rate? Namaste.